This is the sliding table. It has a T-track on the bottom. And it also has some, I put on some low glide, uh, high density polyethylene strips. Mm -hmm. The upper glide through, right. There are four T-nuts in here. You use the forward two T-nuts if you're cutting thin pieces, and the rear two T-nuts if you're cutting fatter pieces, or when you're first starting off with your log, and as you advance it forward, you'll change your lockdowns from the outer T-nuts to the inner T-nuts. So you could use this both to split a log in half down the middle, or you could use it to make boards out of a log. Correct, and we're going to be showing that. And then a fence, sit square to the slide of the table, so the face of it will be cutting parallel to the blade, which was set up earlier as square and, uh, well, square in both dimensions. So we're going to go ahead and uh, get ready to secure it in place. Okay, and so you whether you're adjusting for slice by slice on a resaw, or you're setting up for, as we're going to do a little bit, cutting down the pith line on a log. Um, I wouldn't recommend cutting a log much longer than the table is, just because of when you get to the end, you might find yourself in a position of not having it past the teeth of the blade, and you're overhanging just too much, and it starts to bind on you. So. It does smoothly at 24 inches. This is a uh, wood slicer blade. Uh, I've run off a lot of experience with it, but I have cut a few pieces and I'm very impressed by its performance. Uh, it's considered a low tension blade. Uh, you only have to run your wheels tight enough so that uh, it has no, uh, no free play. Uh, being that the, it's driven from the bottom, the tension is kept on the blade at all times. It also has a variable tooth pattern. You can see here we have three teeth per inch, and then here it goes to four teeth per inch, and then back to three teeth per inch. And so the best I can discern it is two teeth at three teeth per inch, and then three teeth at four teeth per inch. And I not really sure about the science behind uh, gullet clearing or whatever it is, but it, um, it cuts much better than other blades I've used. And I've tried half inch and three quarter inch resaw blades. And this does cut better. It also has an invisible weld joint, which is pretty impressive. You can't see it anywhere on the blade. And so there is no little hiccup that happens each time on a, on a, a blade run where it passes through that weld. So, so far so good. And, and they are guaranteed against breakage, by the way, but not against pinching and binding if, you, if you're running it incorrectly. So that's the, that's the test log. Right, right. That that's one square cut. That's the test log with the It's semi-dried, it was an attempt at uh, homemade spalting, where I buried it underground for two year, a year and a half with yeast and beer. And it only spalted up a little bit. I'm not sure it's not simple uh, discoloration from soil contact. It's on wax, it doesn't. Uh... Yeah. At least it feels like wax, isn't it? It's um, an anchor seal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's a mulberry log. Okay, so over here we're uh, five inches pretty much exactly away. The main thing on keeping the log from binding the blade and ruining the blade, not to mention the log, is uh, you can't give it a chance to start to bind. It doesn't take a lot of resistance power, but it takes steady resistance to keep it from binding. So I'm gonna position it here and I can get 
two of the three rows of screws into it. It is. That's a good cut. And I can use much shorter screws here since I'm on good wood. So that's a pear wood crotch piece that's going to have some nice feather in it somewhere. Now I'd say when in doubt about which hole to use, use the next one up uh, for leverage to keep it from jacking around. The one on Wood Magazine, these were slots instead of holes, which I decidedly didn't like. Uh, the slot just invites, it's going to yank the screw and it can move in the slot. Looks 
to me like uh, just slightly, maybe about three and a quarter would be the best. Uh, by the way, when I made the base, I made it intentionally about a half inch wider than it needed to be. And so the front face has actually been cut on the bandsaw, so I know it's, par I know it's true to the blade. So you could make boards as easily as bowl blanks out of that. Yeah. Very, very nice. 